Knights of the Holy Sepulchre. History. Saint Helena, daughter of Calus, King of Britain, consort of Constantine, and mother of Constantine the Great, in the year 296, made a journey to the Holy Land in search of the cross of Jesus Christ. After leveling the hillocks and destroying the Temple of Venus, three crosses were discovered. It was now difficult to discover which of the three was the one sought for by her. By order of His Holiness, Pope Marcellinus, they were born to the bed of a woman who had long been visited by sickness, and lay at the point of death, she placed her hands upon the second cross first, which rendered her no service, but when she laid her hand upon the third, she was restored to her former health. She instantly arose, giving glory to God, saying, He was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of sin was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed, and God hath laid on him all our iniquities. On the spot where the crosses were found, St. Helena erected a stately church, one hundred paces long and sixty wide, the east end takes in the place where the crosses stood, and the west, of the sepulchre, by leveling the hills, the sepulchre is above the floor of the church, like a grotto which is twenty feet from the floor to the top of the rock, there is a superb cupola over the sepulchre, and in the aisle are the tombs of Godfrey and Baldwin, kings of Jerusalem. In 302, St. Helena instituted the Order of Knights of the Holy Sepulchre of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. This order was confirmed in 304, by His Holiness, Pope Marcellinus, they were bound by a sacred vow to guard the Holy Sepulchre, protect pilgrims, and fight infidels, and enemies of the Cross of Christ. The city of Jerusalem was rebuilt and ornamented by Elias Adrian, Emperor of Rome, and given to the Christians in 120. The Persians took it from them in 637, and 1008 it fell into the hands of the Turks, under whose oppressions it long groaned, until Peter the Holy steered the Western princes to release the distressed church, and in 1096, Godfrey and Baldwin unfurled the banner of the cross, and expelled the Turks. He was to have been invested with the royal wreath of majesty, but he thought it not meet to wear a crown of laurel when his blessed Saviour had worn a crown of thorns. Yet for the common good, he suffered himself to be called the King of Palestine. Description, etc. The council must represent a cathedral church, the altar covered with black, upon which must be placed three large candles, a cross, and in the center a skull and crossbones. The principal stands on the right side of the altar, with a Bible in one hand, and a staff in the other, soft music plays, and the veil is drawn up, and discovers the altar, the choir say. Hush, hush, the heavenly choir. They cleave the air in bright attire. See, see, the lute each angel brings. And hark divinely thus they sing. To the power divine. All glory be given. By man upon earth. And angels in heaven. The priest steps before the altar, and says, Kyrie Ellison, Christi Ellison, Kyrie Ellison. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. Amen, Gloria C.B. Domino. Glory to the Lord Himself. I declare this grand council opened, and ready to proceed to business. The priests and ministers take their several stations and observe order. The candidates being prepared, he alarms at the door by seven raps, and the prelate says to Verger, see the cause of that alarm, and report. Verger goes to the door, and reports, right reverend prelate, there are seven brethren who solicit admission to this grand council. Prelate says, on what is their desire founded? Verger. On a true Christian principle, to serve the church and its members, by performing the seven corporeal works of mercy, and to protect and guard the holy sepulchre, from the destroying hands of our enemies. Prelate. Admit them that we may know them, if you please. They are then admitted, Prelate says to them, Are you followers of the captain of our salvation? Verger says, We are, right reverend Prelate. Prelate. Attend, then, to the sayings of our Master, Jesus Christ. Thou shalt love the Lord, thy God, with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. This is the first great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. The verger and beadle hold the Bible on which the candidates place their right hands. Thou. I, a bee, in the name of the high and undivided Trinity, 
do promise and vow to keep and conceal the high mysteries of this noble and invincible order of knights of the Holy Sepulchre, from all but such as are ready and willing to serve the Church of Christ, by acts of valour and charity, and its members, by performing all the corporeal works of mercy, and that, as far as in me lies, I will defend the Church of the Holy Sepulchre from pillage and violence, and guard and protect pilgrims on their way to and from the Holy Land, and if I perform not this, my vow, to the best of my abilities, let me become in any matters. Dead. Interlace your fingers with the candidate, cross your arms, and say, De mortuis, nil nisi bonum. Concerning the dead, say nothing but good. Prelate says, take the sword, and travel onward, guard the holy sepulchre, defeat our enemies, unfurl the banner of our cross, protect the Roman eagle, return to us with victory and safety. The candidates depart, go to the south, where they meet a band of Turks, a desperate conflict ensues, the knights are victorious, they seize the crescent, and return to the cathedral in triumph, and place the banner, eagle, and crescent before the altar, and take their seats. 22nd Chapter St. John, read by Prelate. Then the choir sing, Creator of the Radiant Light, Dividing Day from Sable Night, Who, with the light bright origin, The world's creation didst begin. Prelate then says, Let our prayer come before thee, and let our exercises be acceptable in thy sight. The seven candidates kneel at the foot of the altar. The prelate takes the bread, and says, Brethren, eat ye all of this bread in love, that ye may learn to support each other. He then takes the cup, and says, Drink ye all of this cup to ratify the vow that ye have made, and learn to sustain one another. The prelate then raises them up by the grip, interlace the fingers and says, First, Sir, I greet thee a knight of the holy sepulchre, go feed the hungry second, give drink to the thirsty, third, clothe the naked with a garment, fourth, visit and ransom the captives, fifth, harbour the harbourless, give the orphan and widow where to lay their heads, sixth, visit and relieve the sick, seventh, go and bury the dead. All make crosses, and say, in nomini patria filio et spiritus sancto, amen. Prelate says, brethren, let us recommend to each other the practice of the four cardinal virtues, prudence, justice, temperance, fortitude. Closing. The knights all rise, stand in circle, interlace their fingers and say, Sepulchrum. Prelate then says, Gloria Patri, et Filio, et Spiritui Sancto. Glory to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Brethren answer, Secut erat in principio, et nunc, et semper et in secula seculorum. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be, world without end. Amen. Benediction. Blessed be thou, O Lord, our God. Great first cause and governor of all things. Thou createst the world with thy bountiful hand, and sustained it by thy wisdom, by thy goodness, and by thy mercy. It cometh to pass that seed time and harvest never fail. It is thou that givest every good and perfect gift. Blessed be thy name for ever and ever. To examine a knight of the holy sepulchre, he holds up the first finger of the right hand, knight holds up the second, you then hold up the third, and he shuts up his first, this signifies three persons in one God.